Benvenuto. Welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today we're going to make tuna cakes or tuna patties or tuna croquettes, whatever you choose to call them. Um, again, this is something my uh, mom used to make uh, every so often when I was a kid. I always enjoyed it, so I thought I would share the way I make it with you guys. Um, of course, Wade would much prefer it be salmon cakes, mm. but I hate salmon, so I'll make him some salmon cakes sometime next week. Uh, but anyway, all right, so this is a quick, easy, no-nonsense uh, recipe. So, of course, since they are tuna cakes, first thing we're going to need is tuna. So for this recipe, we need a 12-ounce can of tuna. You can use any kind of tuna you want. If you want to use uh, solid white, flaked, light, whatever your favorite is. Um, all right. Of course, we're going to open that and drain that. That's going to be drained well. All right. Um, we're going to need some buttercrackers or, you know, that those famous crackers in the red box um, or any kind of uh, buttercrackers. Now, we're going to need about half a cup of those, um, which is, in this case, just so happens to be just about this little package if you get it in the, the tw box that has eight or 12 individually wrapped uh, packages. But you can also use breadcrumbs. I'd use unflavored breadcrumbs uh, because, again, uh, this is a somewhat of a light flavor anyway. And if you used Italian or a really heavily seasoned breadcrumb, um, it's going to overpower the flavor of the tuna. Um, you could use panko, plain panko breadcrumbs, uh, plain breadcrumbs, um, or saltines, uh, whatever you prefer. I happen to like the buttercrackers. Um, next thing that we need is one egg. Uh, we need the zest and juice of half an onion. Now, I have a little zester, which I have never like the way it works. So I actually always just go back to this one. So you know when you zest a lemon, you want to just zest, zest off the, the outer part of it. You don't want to get too much of the white because that's the pith and it's going to get bitter. So quite easy. However you, some people can really, are really good at just, uh, cutting this off as well. And a little bit goes a long way. Believe it or not, that's really all we need is those few little pieces that we're getting under there. Because of course the zest of the lemon, I mean you could just smell it so much right now. But that's really all we're going to need for our purposes of this recipe. We'll get it all up in a little spot there. Then we need the juice. I happen to have a nice little handy dandy juicer that I like a lot. Which of course is not going to work for me the way it's supposed to while well, you're all watching. There we go. I don't know where I got this. We got this many years ago. I think it actually came with something else we got. Huh? Mm. Like something else we bought. It was part of it. It's, oh, I think the juicer. Because it's the same colors of that old juicer that we bought many years ago. All right, we got that pretty well juiced. No seeds in there. I'm going to put our lemon zest right in our juice so we're ready to use it. All right. And our onion, now we want to cut our onion somewhat fine. Again, we've done this many times. I cut the onion in half. I peeled off um, everything but the root end. All right. And we're going to you don't need much of this. I'm going to check the recipe because I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how much we need. Um, it's just a small, yeah, it's a fourth of a cup. So we only need a small amount. Again, this, the measurements that I've done this with, um, you know, is, is it's going to make probably six nice 
should have taken that outer outer skin off because it's gonna drive me crazy. Um, it's probably gonna make like maybe four big patties, maybe six small. Anyway, so and then I'm just gonna cut that really small. Because that's really all that we need right there. I'm going to save that onion because I can use that, the rest of that later. Um, okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you how I do that. I'm sure you all can figure out how, how to do it, but uh, those are the couple little uh, techniques that I use. Um, we're going to need some seasoning. We need about two teaspoons of um, parsley. I'm happy to be using our dry parsley. You could use fresh if you want, of course. We need uh, about uh, a half a teaspoon of salt um, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Again, salt and pepper is to your liking. Um, all right, so we've got the tuna, we've got the egg, we've got oat mayonnaise, and a little bit of um, sweet relish. Um, if you want to use dill relish, you certainly can. Um, you can use um, a hot sauce in there. If you like, uh, if you want to add a little bit of spice to it, add, uh, you know, maybe several uh, shakes of hot sauce um, or sriracha. Um, all right, guys, I think that's all the ingredients we need. Let's make our tuna cakes. Okay, guys, well, of course, um, I forgot to go over the uh, in when we were showing you the ingredients, but you need a little bit of oil, too, to fry them up in. All right, you can use whatever kind of oil you want. I'm using extra virgin oil, uh, olive oil. You can use vegetable oil, whatever you prefer. Um, all right, so I've got our drained um, can of, Tolan's can of tuna. I'm just going to break it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be minced really fine, but nice to get a few little chunks in, but we want everything to come together. All right, so then we'll throw in our onions. And a good time to throw in our seasoning. Now this isn't, um, you know, you're, this should be moist uh, and binded together enough to be able to make a you know a nice uh, patty that will hold together um, you shall see speaking of that let's add our um, butter crackers in probably switch over to a wooden spoon in a minute, but we can add in our lemon juice and our zest. Yeah, let's add our egg in. Mayonnaise 
relish in. And we're going to get this mixed together nicely. So that should be very nice for you to be able to form them into patties. All right, that looks good. All right, I'm going to pick up the rest of this mess. We'll come back. But before I leave, we're going to get our pan heating up. Piece of onion skin. And we'll be right back. Okay guys, so I've got my, pita, my uh, pan is nice and heated. Now I just happen to be using my cast iron pan because it's easier to do it here uh, to film instead of having to do it over at the stove. Um, either use your well seasoned cast iron pan or a um, nonstick. So now my goal isn't necessarily to deep fry these. So that's probably about three tablespoons of um, oil, all right? And it really depends upon how, on, how big you want to make uh, your, your uh, tuna cakes. You can make them into patties and be awesome on a, a hamburg bun. Or you can make smaller um, uh, cakes if you're uh, doing this as an appetizer. Um, but, which I'm going to probably do them about that big. All right, so there you see it, it holds to, together pretty nicely. It's, it's going to be a wet. It's not going to, you know, be like... A, as a firm as a meatball or if you're making um, meatloaf. But I usually will go ahead and get them all done. So put them on a plate. And of course it also depends upon how thick you want them. I'm probably gonna get about five of this size out of them. into it. I'll take this last one. It's going to be a little bit smaller than the others, but that's all right. Okay, so of course, remember when you're dealing with oil, you always want to end it so that it's away from you. Oh, that, came, that went in there really nice. So you put it down in front. And end away. I think I can get three in there comfortably. Okay, so we all know what we're gonna do. We're gonna fry these until they're what way? Golden brown. Golden brown and delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> um, all right, so that's probably gonna take a good uh, three, four or five minutes uh, on each side, guys. We'll come back in a few minutes. We'll check if they're ready to flip them over, and we'll flip them over. In the meantime, I'll go wash my hands. See you in a bit. All right, it's been just about five minutes. You'll see this is nicely browned. And... Um, that side is more of what I'd like it to be, a little bit crunchy on the other side. So we're going to leave the others for a few minutes. I'm actually going to increase my heat a little bit. And we'll check on the other one in a minute. Be back. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I actually had turned the, the heat source down a little further than I should have in because uh, it was screaming hot. There we go. That's exactly what we want. A nice brown crust on there. Let's check this one. This one should be good. Perfect. All right, so we're going to give those uh, another five minutes. We'll see you then. Oh, and our heat's on about medium high. Okay, so let's kind of let's take a quick look. Ah, perfect. Very nice. Transform over to our serving platter. 
in. I'm going to get the other two in. And then it's time to eat. See you in a little bit. Okay, supper time, yay! <laughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, well, for tonight what we're having for supper is we're having our tuna fish uh, cakes or croquettes or patties, whatever you want to call them, um, which we just made. And uh, we also made um, a sweet pea salad a little mm -hmm. earlier, um, right here. Of course, that's going to be in its own separate video. And Wade will spice it all together for everybody. Hmm. All right. Yep. What should we go for first? Uh, doesn't matter to me. You choose. Uh, we'll go with the peas. All right. I haven't made this in a long time. I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Mm. I don't know if I, if I've made this for Wade. This about a long time ago. So I'm going to let him try it first. Mm. Hey, pea. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Just like I remember. Good. To me, it tastes like spring and mm. summer. Mm. I mean, imagine that. I'll make this over the summertime when we're having a cookout or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a nice change from just a potato salad or a macaroni salad. It's cool and refreshing. Love it. Mm. Just like I remember. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. And we've got a little tartar sauce here for our fish baits. A little mm -hmm. nice squeeze lemon would work as well. Mm. Can't wait for the salmon version of this. Yes, I know. <laughs> I hate salmon. Mm. I didn't even see the smell of it. Mm. Mm. That is tasty for mm. canned tuna fish. Mm. Oh yeah. It's got a nice little crunch to it. It's, it's kind of salty and tangy. Yeah. Mm. That's delicious. Delicious. Mm. Makes a really nice supper or lunch. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So delicious. Well, I hope you have all enjoyed watching us make our supper tonight. More importantly, I hope you make it and you enjoy it. All I have to say. <laughs> Please check us out on cherryhillhomecooking.com. Please like and subscribe. And see you in the next video. Ciao. Bye.